everyone welcome to our online worship experience we are so glad you have joined us today this is the day the lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it hey as we head into the countdown say hello to somebody and tell us where you're joining from and after the countdown join us in the world Valentine. This is the month of Valentine. Praise the name of the Lord. What an awesome time of worship in the presence of the Lord. How many of you felt the presence of God here? Okay. Just in case you didn't, God is in the house and God said to us this morning, just ask. What did God say? Okay, so I just want to give you one minute to ask God, what do you want from God? Just ask, because there is mighty power of God present to cause things to happen this morning. Ask one thing from the Lord. I'll give you one minute. Just ask one thing from the Lord. about you but I wrote it down because I've asked God and I know that God is giving it to me. God is coming through for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. This morning I want to continue in our series of upgrade. Of upgrade. As we entered the year there are three things that I felt the Lord was going to ask us to pray about and to believe God for. And the reason I say God asked us because I do believe that God runs the anointing from the head down to the body and to every area of the body. So if God gave it to me, I want to believe. We can all believe God for it. Number one, I want you to repeat after me. is an upgrade in our faith. Say upgrade in my faith. Number two, it's upgrade in my finances. Say upgrade in my finances. Number three, it's upgrade in my family. Someone say upgrade in my family. Do you believe that? I want you to visualize that this year your faith will grow.
grow. You become stronger in the things of God. You'll be elevated to new levels of faith in the realms of the spirit. You believe God for the impossible. You begin to sing songs like Megan. What God cannot do does not exist. I want you to visualize yourself in your finances beginning to be a blessing to others. God blessing your family, your children. God blessing those that are around you and you prospering in your finances. I do believe that one reason God blesses us with our finances is for our family to be blessed and those that are around us. Amen? And number three, I want you to visualize your family, your spouse. And I, don't just listen, visualize your family, your spouse, your life becoming better. Hallelujah. One more thing before we get into the word. This morning, I want you to be like Brother Joseph, Prophet Joseph. I see him. He has a piece of paper. He has a pen. If you do not have a piece of paper, get your phone. Go on notepad because I want you to take notes. Yeah, I see my wife is always taking notes. She's a good note taker. Praise God. Um, if the man of God, Joseph, can take notes, then you can take notes. <laughs> Hallelujah. So open uh, your iPad and take notes. Uh, Evelyn always comes back years later to remind me of myself. Okay. I want you to take notes because I do believe that God has a special word for us. This morning, God is going to shift us in our perspective of God and life. Because sometimes we have believed things because everyone has just said it. And we have just absorbed it and lived in it. And we have not researched the word of God or allowed God to speak to us. And so we go through life without experiencing the full benefit of our relationship with God. So I want to zero in on the last of the three things that God is going to do. Last week we began by laying a foundation that upgrade is by the power of Upgrade is by the power of the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit. Today, I want to zero in on family. I want to zero in on family. Someone say family. I want to talk about the foundation, the cornerstone of a family. If we are going to experience an upgrade in our families, this is one truth that you need to understand. Not just to hear, but to understand. That's why Paul said, I pray that the Lord would bring understanding to you. We increase your understanding. You may grow in the knowledge of this God. Knowledge of this God. Understanding. So I want us to go to a scripture that has been recited from Sunday school, but so powerful, so profound, John 3, 16. And I want to speak just on that verse today. John 3, 16. And I'm, one, I'm going to invite us to stand and we're going to read it together from the PowerPoint at the count of three. Okay, John 3, 16. One, two, three, go. For God saw... I didn't plan that, but I think God did it. That's Neshim. <laughs> let's, give, let's give a clap over it for Neshim. Neshim, you did it, man. And that's the thrust of everything. Anyway, do what you need to do there to make sure everything changes. You may be seated. I'm going to continue. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How many of you remember that God is three? Okay, write that. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Father. Listen to me. God the Father. That's where we get that word Abba. 
Abba. Abba simply means God the Father. This morning we have been crying out to Abba Father. We belong to you, Abba. We belong to you, God our Father. So, Abba Father has loved us. And when he loved us, what did he do? He gave the Son. Last week we looked at the third person of the Trinity, who is the Holy Spirit, our helper. Someone said, the Holy Spirit is my helper. The Holy Spirit is my helper. But today, I want us to look and see that Abba Father loved us. God the Father loved us. He loved us. So I want to talk about upgrade through love. Upgrade through love. What is going to cause our families to be upgraded is what? Love. I know most of us thought we'll be upgraded when God begins to bless our finances. No, love is what is going to cause upgrade. Someone say love. 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 And I, I, I submit this to you as we launch into this month of February because the month of February is an opportunity for us to express love. That's where we have the Valentine's Day. This coming week is Valentine's where we express what? Love to one another. The Bible says make the most of every opportunity. Make the most of every opportunity. Maybe this, this, this week we're going to do something different. We're going to air this sermon on Valentine's Day. We're going to air it on Valentine's Day. And then we'll repeat it on Sunday again. For those of you that are not here, you have traveled, I know, God bless you. You can listen to it again. What is upgrade? Let's remind ourselves of the word upgrade. Upgrade is moving from the present to the better. Someone say better. It's an act of making something better. I want you to, to capture that word better. Because when the Lord is talking about upgrade in our families, he's talking about making our families better. Hallelujah. It is that act of raising something to a higher standard. To a higher standard. So what is love? So what is love? There are two key words, generally. I'm going to define it generally, and then I want to give you three nuggets from the Word of God, how we define love, by three words. Generally, love has two connotations. Number one, love is an action word. It's an action word. We are taught that love is the feeling that we have that brings pleasure. That's what the difference dictionary defines it but more than the feeling that brings pleasure love is an action love is kind love is patient love protects love rejoices are we together love is an action it's an action secondly i want you to know that love is about giving the foundation of love is a desire to give a desire. Someone say, give me a desire to give. Give me a desire to give. Come on, say it one more time. The Lord said, ask this morning. Say, Father, give me a desire to give. And love is an action. Lord, give me a desire to act. A desire to act. For what? For a better life. For a better life. For a better life. In the Bible, the Bible was initially written in Greek. There are three words in the Greek that are used that are translated into English and they all are translated as the word love. Are we together? They are translated as love. Every time I grew up when I came into church and I was taught about love, I was taught about agape love. Anybody in the house? 
agape love. But I want to show you that the three definition of love are actually rooted in God. And if we are going to get an upgrade this year, we need to get everything that comes from our Father God. Is someone ready to receive everything from God? Not just what we have been taught, but what God wants to give us. The first Greek word that we find of the word love is philos. Growing up, I used a different Greek word that is related to the same as phileo. It's the same word, philo, phileo. In John chapter 21 verse 7, we are told that Jesus expressed this kind of love. And if we are going to receive an upgrade, this is one kind of love that should manifest in our life in form of an action, in form of giving. The Bible says, Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard, it was, heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer coat, garment around him. Don't worry about all that. I want you to get something from there. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to him. Now, it's very interesting that the writer of this text is John, the disciple. And John never referred to himself as, I am the one. But he was talking about himself. Saying the disciple who Jesus loved. Now, they were all Jesus' disciples. But there is this understanding of this man that there is a unique love that I received from Jesus. There is a unique love that I received from Jesus. This is not the same love that you read in, anywhere else. Okay? I want you to understand the nature of this love and the purpose. This is love that helps us to do life. Someone said to do life. To do life. Love is an action word. This is love that helps us to do life. So if we are going to do love to, life together, yeah, if we're going to do love together, we're going to do life together, we need to do this love together. <laughs> Are we together? Listen to me. It is love that is about friendship. It's friendship. It's about affection. The goal is for us to have a better life. So, John the disciple and Jesus had this unique relationship of friendship. That's why he said the disciple that Jesus loved. And this is a relationship that we are supposed to have with one another. This is a relationship that we are supposed to have with God. Did you know Abba God wants us to be his friend? Not just father, but a friend. Jesus wants us to be his friend. And also when we relate with one another, we need to be friends. In short, catch this. God is calling us in our families to be friends. The best friends are supposed to be our family members. Is someone catching it this morning? We are supposed to be friends. What do friends do? They do life together. They go to watch movies together. They eat together. They tell stories together. They laugh. They cry with one another as well. They support one another. When one is mourning, they mourn with them. When one is rejoicing, they rejoice with them. Come on, somebody. We do life together. Jesus did life with his disciples. But in particular, there was this unique relationship with John, the disciple 
that Jesus loved. Can your spouse say, the wife, the husband, that he loves, that she loves. Lord, help me. Lord, help me this morning that my wife can say my husband loves me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I know, I know my wife loves me. I know there's no doubt about that. But Lord, help me that I may love her. Not just to tell her, but she can say, there is solo that loves me. That's my prayer. This week, okay, if you are not praying for yourself, pray for me. And my wife will love you even more. <laughs> So, so, can our spouses, can our children say, my daddy that loves me, my mother that loves me, that's Phileo. Phileos. John said, was loved by this Jesus. And it was not just John. You remember Lazarus when he passed away. When Jesus got there, the Bible says he wept because he had this relationship with Lazarus. The sisters knew it. When, when they were in the mess, they said, we need to call Jesus. When Jesus came, came, came there, they said, this man loved this, our brother, so much. That was not agape. That was phileo. It was a friendship that they had, which was deep. And we need to grow in that. It's godly. We need to be friends. We need to be there for one another. Are you there for somebody? Are you there for somebody? Can people count on you? Come on, TJ. Can people count on you? Lift your right hand and say, Father, may I be a good friend. In Jesus' name. You said this morning, ask. Come on. You said this morning, ask. I ask this morning. May I be a good friend? In Jesus' name. Number two. Number two. Let's go to number two. My iPad is gone off. Number two. The second kind of relationship that we find in the Bible is called Eros. It's a, it's a kind of relationship or love that is more than just friendship. And that is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. It says, Do not deprive each other of sexual relations unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so you can give yourself more completely to prayer. And Brother Joseph says, Hallelujah. There's prayer there. <laughs> Afterwards, you should come back together again so that Satan would not be able to tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Let me explain to you. Eros, this is a relationship that you find in a marriage context marriage context so this is for those that are married and for you who will be getting married later so this is foundation like I'm preparing you are we together this is a relationship that you find in marriage it is sexual it is physical it's in the Bible if you are going to get an upgrade this has to happen it is expressed in marriage it is physical. It is sexual. But I want you to go to that verse again because I want to draw three things about this kind. Everyone is looking down. Come on, look at me. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Okay? Number one, I want you to see that Jesus says, do not deprive each other. If we are going to get an upgrade, we need to ask God to help us to be available for one another. It's quiet. We need to ask God to help us to be available for one another. Do not deprive. Real upgrade in the family 
is rooted in this. Love. Not money, not things, not buildings. It's love. Love is the foundation. Number two, I want you to notice something there. It says, there is a time when you can actually be away from each other. But the condition is that you are seeking to connect with God. Which means there is a point where you become so intimate with God. The only people that can understand this are those that are married. But that's the level where God is inviting. Where you become so intimate with God that you find pleasure in the presence of God. That's what fasting is all about. When you fast, you are seeking God. You are going deeper in your relationship with God. We need to get an upgrade in that area too. There ought to be times this year when you are just seeking God, just fasting, waiting on the Lord. I want you to see is, is, is that Satan is after your life. Satan is after your life. God say, I am sending Jesus so that they may have a better life. From the words of Jesus, he calls it abundant life. Someone say abundant life. That's an upgrade. Abundant life. The devil is after your life. He doesn't want you to have a good life. So he messes up this kind of love in your life. He messes it up so that you miss it. And let me tell you, when you miss it, you are missing out on the full blessing of God. The devil will tell you lies will give you reasons why you should not. I arrest every spirit of the enemy that is tormenting God's people and taking away the abundant life. Father, this year, elevate us, lift us. In the name of Jesus, we declare an upgrade in our families. propose to you most of us have young kids here none of my kids are married before our kids are married let's do it the African way bring your children for counseling let's talk to them did you hear what I said let's talk to them let's help them understand what marriage is all about let's not just release them to the world and think they know what they are doing let's talk to them let's get elders in the church sit them down and talk to them and teach them I was taught I didn't know. I was shocked when I was getting married. I thought I knew everything. When I sat down and they taught me, I said, what? I didn't know. It would have been terrible. Abandoned life. Someone say abandoned life. Errors. We don't have time. But let me give you the third one. The third one. Agape. Agape love. What is agape love? Go to the next slide. Father, the Father God, Abba, gave us this love. By the way, remember, you are writing notes. Phileo or fellows is how we do life. Okay? Eros is how we enjoy life. How we enjoy life. Agape is how we serve. We serve from the point of agape. It's sacrificial. It's unconditional. This is where we give to one another unconditionally. This is where we say it's Valentine. I give you and I don't care whether you give me back. Come on, somebody. This is where you say 
You are my wife. I will spend on you even if you don't spend on me. And, and can, let me be honest that it's been in the last few years that the Lord has really taught me this because I grew up in my marriage. Don't do what I did in my first years of marriage because I thought if I love my wife, she needs to love me. If she doesn't love me, oh man, you know. It's a, but it's because I had a limited understanding of the revelation of love. If we are going to get the best, you need to get to a point where you can give even if they don't give back. Am I talking to somebody? Hello? Maybe I need to have church with all the men only, right? You give even when they don't give back. That's an upgrade. It's sacrificial. That's an upgrade. How many of us give to church and say, oh, if I'm not getting anything from this church, I'll stop giving. If I don't get anything from this family, I'll stop giving. If I don't get any high, any calls, I'm not going to call back. I'm not going to check on them. And yet we are one family. We are E3 family. Oh, they never called me. They are going through a situation. I don't care. I'll not visit them. When did they ever call me? When? No, 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 no. Agape, the foundation of family. If you are praying for an upgrade in your family, agape. Someone say agape. It's unconditional. That's how God gave his own son. Who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God. Left heaven, descended on earth, became a human. The son was born to live to be tempted, to go through pain. He, he got hungry. He was spat upon. He was smitten. He was beaten. He was accused just for you and for me. He gave. But I want you to catch this. That agape love is the giving in pleasure for both the giver and the receiver. What a powerful word, powerful experience. Thank you all so much for joining us. Hey, if this is your first time, we'd love to connect with you. So please fill out a digital connect card and find the link in the comments. I hope you all have a lovely Sunday. Have a blessed week and see you again next Sunday.